all about the PRP treatment for hair regrowth. If you have hair fall and you have hair thinning, you're suffering from hair fall for a long time. You see hair everywhere when you get up from your bed on your pillow, when you wash your hair in the drain, whenever you comb in your comb or hairbrush. When you see lots of hair everywhere, it is bound that you have some problem. You are a bit desperate. How do I get rid of this hair fall? And suppose you keep on thinking about it. You search on it online. You may even visit a doctor. But then again, you are having hair thinning. And then day by day, you are seeing that your hair is getting thin. Your scalp visibility is there. And you need to do something. Suddenly, while searching online, you come across the word PRP, platelet-rich plasma. And then when you go and visit a doctor, he or she also suggests a series of medical treatments along with PRP or mesotherapy that is medical treatment plus therapies. Again, you are confused. PRP again. What is PRP? How do I gain from PRP? What will be done exactly with my body, with my blood whenever PRP is made? There are so many questions in your mind and you want answers for that. You want it to be non-stressful procedure, a procedure which helps you and you also keep on doing your normal day-to-day -day activities. There is no surgery involved but still you are fearful of it. If this is the case with you, this video is for you because today we'll be discussing all such points. What is PRP? How it is made? What are the different procedures by which it is done? What all things we have to take care while undergoing PRP? What positive things you can expect from PRP? Who are those patients or cases in which PRP is indicated? Then what can be the possible side effects? What are the absolute contraindications and what are relative contraindications for platelet rich plasma or PRP? My name is Dr. Preeti Saraswat. I'm American board certified hair transplant surgeon. Today we'll be discussing all these things and if you have any more queries about these hair problems, you want solutions for them, you want education regarding any of these, you can very well subscribe to our channel. We'll be happy to help. So PRP is a part of blood only. It is platelet-rich plasma. Plasma is the liquid part of blood. Platelets are one of those smaller cells which are present in the blood apart from red blood cells and white blood cells. When the plasma is centrifuged in such a way that we get a concentrated solution of platelets more than five times, then it is a good PRP. PRP has been known to help us in various medicines like sports medicine, regenerative medicine, aesthetic medicine, and also in hair loss treatment how and why we'll understand and discuss very shortly. So this brings us for a major question. Does PRP help in male pattern baldness? This male pattern baldness is a problem in which the thick terminal hair, they keep on getting thinner and thinner, which is called miniaturization in a way that you keep on losing them and there is thinness and balding present on the scalp. Male pattern baldness we'll discuss before we come to the female pattern baldness. In male pattern baldness, the problem can start from the temples, from the front as well as the crown. So this problem, when it is there, you may come across PRP treatment. In 2011, the first research paper was published by Takinawa and others. They discussed the role of PRP in the hair regrowth and hair thickness and density. So the first controlled clinical trial of PRP was done by Takinawa and others in 26 male patients. From 2014 till now, there have been several publications which tell us that PRP is helpful in the ways discussed just now. So after five sessions in 12 months, they saw the result of PRP in the split scalp research they were doing. So increase in hair thickness, diameter, as well as increased number of hair was seen in PRP area other than the control area. Also, the subjective happiness of patient was there that they were looking better. Again, when they did the punch biopsy and they saw it under the microscope, they could see increased thickness of epidermis, increased blood supply towards the hair follicles surrounding the hair follicles and also increased collagen and fibroblasts. There are two studies by Puig and Mayer. They told us that PRP may not be that helpful but then the PRP was done in one or two sessions and the result was found out after one or two sessions only. So you see the number of PRP was less and so a major consensus is that PRP may be actually helpful when you do for male pattern baldness. If you're liking the video till now please press the like button. 
pattern. Coming to the next question, whether PRP is helpful for female pattern hair loss or not. So what happens in female pattern hair loss? As in males, in females also gradually there is thinning of the terminal hairs. The terminal hairs keep on miniaturizing, increase in the vellus hair, increase in the vellus is to terminal ratio and the scalp starts being visible and thinning of hair in the scalp is there. As contrast from the males, we may not get bald from the temples or from the crown. Females as a rule always preserve the frontal hairline but the thinning may be so much that grade 1, 2 or 3 Ludwig visibility of scalp may be there. A study was done in 2020 in which 92 patients were taken and after PRP the increase in hair density and hair thickness was seen. Another study was done in 2021 in which 776 patients were taken and the same increment in hair density and hair thickness, epidermis, the blood around the hair follicles was seen. Accordingly, there have been many studies later on with different number of patients in which we have seen that PRP helps. Moreover, high level of satisfaction and happiness in female patients' quality of life is seen after PRP because of the obvious changes in hair caliber and hair density. So interestingly, there was a research in 2020 which aimed at seeing who gets more benefit by PRP, the male pattern hair loss patients or the female pattern hair loss patients. So when this research was done, it was shown that in male pattern hair loss, both hair density and hair thickness was increased. In females, hair thickness was increased but not hair density. But then this study was a bit non-randomized. There was small sample size and therefore more research is needed in this field in order to give a proper fact. If you have a question in your mind regarding PRP and you actually were searching for PRP, please type a yes in the comment. Let us now discuss something about how PRP can help in alopecia areata. What is alopecia areata? In alopecia areata, your body becomes the enemy of your own hair roots. It makes antibodies against your own roots and tries to destroy them. So it is a non-fibrosing alopecia in which the shaft is lost but there is no fibrosis. The follicle is there but again you don't have hair. So in these cases, the main problem is shiny scalp but at the same time no fibrosis. Now when PRP was done in these patients it was seen that it caused decreased cytokines. Cytokines are bad for hair growth and it also increased KI67. KI67 is the growth factor for hair. So it increased hair growth and it decreased cytokines. So it helped in alopecia areata. In alopecia areata, the main factor, the main drug which can help is a steroid, triamcinolone. So this steroid when given has different side effects also. So there are patients who know about alopecia areata because they suffer from alopecia areata, there was a study for them whether PRP is more helpful or triamcinolone is more helpful. So different studies have been there, many studies till now. Some of the studies suggest PRP was better, the other studies suggest steroid therapy was better and it is still debatable. But there are plus points to each of them. Again, there are different alopecias in beard, like you've seen the rounded, called alopecia barbe, the rounded hair loss regions people have in the beard. So in people, who do not want to use steroid for the beard alopecia areata, they can try PRP for the beard alopecia. So PRP is useful not only alone, but it is much more useful when you do it with the derma roller. So if you want to know more about it, you can click on the video above. There are certain fibrosing alopecias which people suffer from. For example, FFA, frontal fibrosing alopecia, in which you can see people losing eyebrow along with the frontal hairline. You can see some redness and loss of hair shiny scalp at the same time. Then there can be cases of lichen planopilaris, again a fibrosing alopecia in which people suffer from shiny scalp. They may even have tufting and flaking and various other conditions. PRP has been shown to give some benefit in both of these cases, which are fibrosing alopecias. Coming to how PRP can be helpful with hair transplant. So during hair transplant, there have been studies that after we do the slit making, if we give PRP, not only the grafts are taken up better, but they give better growth after the transplant. When transplant is done, if PRP is done at regular intervals later on, like three monthly or four monthly, again, it gives better results. 
telling you in short how PRP is made. PRP is actually made by centrifugation of your blood, which may be taken from your venous area. Your venous blood is taken 16 to 20 ml or more in certain cases. It may depend on the kit your doctor is using. That blood when taken and centrifuged along with the control, it's a little technical procedure. Usually you can see three layers in the test tube. So the lowest is red blood cell layer. The uppermost is platelet poor plasma, PPP. And the in-between layer is actually PRP. So once PRP is made, ideally your center should check with the heme lab so that they know that the PRP made here has platelet concentration more than five times the normal concentration of platelet in the patient's blood. Only then your PRP is standardized and good. Usually when PRP is done, we combine it with low-level laser therapy and derma roller so that we get a triple benefit of the same procedure in the same frame of time. So if you are suffering from such problems, you can always call us for consultation. Now when PRP is done, there can be some adverse effects which are there when we do it. Sometimes people are pain sensitive. Even if we apply a numbing cream to them or we can apply a ring block, sometimes they may feel localized pain when we are injecting the PRP. Then there could be some redness, some itching and a little erythema post-procedure. Very few people can experience some swelling on the forehead but it is not at all common. There can be no allergy to PRP because it's your own byproduct of blood. So that way it is very safe. You can shampoo your hair after 8 hours or preferably we say you can shampoo the next morning. Then you can resume your work just after PRP if you're okay. If you feel a little headache or little pain, then you can come for PRP on your day of week off and then you can resume your work the next day. There is no need to shave your head or any other thing which may hamper your normal living. There are absolute contraindications when PRP should not be taken at all. Number one is when the platelet count is very low, which is called thrombocytopenia. Then if the platelet is dysfunctional, they are not working properly. There are other blood instabilities. Then there is infection at the lupal site, there is sepsis in the blood or the patient realistic conditions are low. The patient feels everything can be done with PRP, my hair will go back but in this cannot be the case. PRP can only help you up to a certain extent. Then there are relative contraindications like the doctor will decide whether you can take PRP or not. These are those cases in which you have anemia. Your hemoglobin is less than 10 gram per deciliter, but the doctor will decide whether you can take PRP or not. Then in cases of low platelets, again, doctor is in a position to decide. Then you have taken NACIDs like painkillers within 48 hours. And also if you have taken glucocorticoids or steroids within two weeks. So these are those cases in which doctor will decide for you whether you should take PRP or not. If you like this video, you can always share share and subscribe it to your family and loved ones so that they are benefited with this. If you want to learn more about scalp micropigmentation, click the video on the left. If you want to see a testimonial of a hair transplant patient, click the video on the right.